All right, so Brother Brian, what you got going on so, over here on this pan? So uh, we melted some butter in here, and what we're going to do in here is brown our meat. Then I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to put in the vegetables and create a broth. Then we'll add the meat back in. Okay, okay. beautiful. Now, why do you choose butter as opposed to like oil? Well, you know what? It started off because that's what the recipe my mom gave me. Said. And that's a good you enough know, reason. If it's good enough for mom, that's that's what I did. Now, I've, I've thought about changing that, but I just, I haven't made it enough to get that far to make the, the change of uh, that part of the recipe yet. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. So um, we have cube steak here, and we're just going to slice this up into little pieces. You want some bite-sized pieces. You don't want to make them too big. I've seen it in restaurants where they just make it like that, and right. they, they brought it that way. Is that that would actually be interesting. I, I, I'd like to see them. What, make it long like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you know, we just kind of chop it up in cubes like this. So we used about two pounds and uh, brown that up. So. Now, believe it or not, one of the reasons they call it cube steak is because folks do cut it up into cubes because it's a tougher cut of meat and it needs to actually braise. It needs to be cooked in liquid. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about that because no, well, there you go. when I cook it, it can get, it can get tough. It can get if, tough. If the, if the pieces are too big. I always add more meat than what my mom called for. He said for. Iowa. Okay. I always. Oh, I always. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. We're not speaking clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Make yourself useful. For those of you guys who know the outcome, Jeez. I get to play with my meat. <laughs> you get to play with my meat. <laughs> Careful now. Careful. My kids might be watching now, this. Now, what you can't see, and Keenan, I don't know if you can get a close-up over here. I'll see. You see how the home chef cuts his, professional makes lengths, and just comes. Well, Oh, well, he's got to try to one up, don't you? No. Oh, he's got to try to one up. It's not about that. It's about cubes. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's cube steak. I don't cut it. In I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be a bastard. <laughs> so uh, you got your meat all cut up. Then we just toss We're it in here. Bob and eat your heart up. That's right. We're just going to brown that up. It's, it's going to take a few minutes because we have so much meat. Exactly. All right. But once it starts going, it'll it'll start going quick. Toss it in. I'm going to do the onions. And then we're going to add a celery, some celery in there. Ooh. You added some broth that you made. Yes, I did. I'm using the cheap, easy, home cook way. Which is all right. Bouillon cubes. And this is just the bouillon cubes in the water. Just stir it up, kind of mix it up a little bit. Now, now, there was yeah. one of the things I was trying to show you while, while you're doing that as well. Uh -huh. The stores actually feature something, too, that they called better than bouillon. Well, is it because it just says that, or...? Uh... Give it a taste. It's very strong. Very strong. That's amazing. Very intense, beefy, beefy flavor. It's almost like taking this yeah. and reducing or it. Or just through. taking the whole cube and putting it in my mouth, almost. Yeah. And you use that in place of salt. Okay. Very intense. So you can just take like a tablespoon, I think is what it said on there. Instead of bouillon cubes, if you have that, you want to get some, um, that's almost like a, what they call a glaze. Is that like a glaze, exactly. A demi-glaze. Almost like a demi-glaze, a demi-glaze, <laughs> or, or a glass. We like to use the, use the French terminology, we call it the glass. Uh, glace. But, but, but in, in restaurants, we actually call these things like this bases. Bases, okay. okay. You can actually, because, you know. That's probably you know, what we call it back home, too. Exactly. <laughs> That's what you call it. You know, in place of bouillon cube, sometimes in a restaurant, you know, you can add a base, beef, chicken, fish, lobster, turkey, whatever, you know, protein to a water. It's just a little bit richer. Sometimes I use the bouillon cubes. I like to use them in place of salt. When I'm making oh, really? something beef, why not add a, a beef salt to it? Okay. Now, I usually mix some uh, chicken bouillon to make my rice as well. So there you, you can use that. You can use this as well. In place of any where, where, Wherever you would salt? use salt. Yeah, it's a ton of salt. So, or flavor. so like if okay. you're making your rice, like you said, put your water in, Take some of the base, dissolve it right, or take some of the base, dissolve it right in there, and it's going to uh -huh. give you a more intense flavor. Oh, okay. So I'm going to bring this back up to a boil, and then I'm going to dump my um, mushrooms in. And you can use, my mom uses canned mushrooms quite a bit. Um, I, I grab fresh just because I, I like fresh. I like <laughs> fresh too. <laughs> but fresh. if you don't have any and you, uh, have, you happen to have some, fresh, fresh, put fresh, the mushrooms fresh, in, it's going to add the flavor. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, mushrooms the in there. The fungus among us. Fungus and I didn't chop us. any of those. I just got the, the box and just dumped them in. Which is just fine. Yeah. Professional shortcuts, home shortcuts, time savers. That works. Absolutely. Uh, now, I if I was at home juice. and making this for the kids to eat, 
I probably would have cut them up a little bit just because they don't like to see the big chunks. So it all kind of depends on what, what you like and what will <laughs> work see, for your you family. Know, believe you know? it or not, even the chef's daughter, mm -hmm. even though she likes asparagus and oysters and a few other things, uh -huh. she's not that crazy about mushrooms. No? Go finger. See, the, the two older ones, mm -hmm. they're not crazy about them. The, the younger one, all she would eat. The last time I made this, all she would eat with the mushrooms. Get out of here. Yeah. The that was it. in children. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Depending on the amount of time you have, uh, this ad has simmered for up to an hour, and you can just reduce it and let it go and keep let adding water. Do your thing. Yeah. You can let it go. Um, you don't have to let it simmer that long. You can just thicken it up now, kind of like what T did. I'm going to use, instead of flour, I'm going to use cornstarch. And I'm going to make a slurry instead of, you know, how he just kind of when tossed his right up top. take a ride on a slurry. With a friend joint. That's a surrey, though, isn't it? A surrey, yes. Yeah, so yeah. the, okay. Well, the, no, the surrey is like a cage, uh, the, the carriage. Once and again, the, and the friend only is, someone from Iowa would know this. Or anyone who's seen the musical. <laughs> Come on now. So, so, so show them that All right. Slurry. So I put in uh, like a little bit of cornstarch. Then we're gonna add just add a little bit of water to it. Now, now also when you're making slurries, you know you can also vary it up sometimes, as opposed to just using water. Because a lot of folks are looking at this. Some some somebody's grandmother going, "Hey, you never call that no slurry. You just you just call that a whitewash or whatever." You can use whatever liquid you want. You can use the broth. You can right? use the broth. You can use stock. You can use wine. Yeah. Vary it up. Whatever that liquid is. Okay, to help dissolve that cornstarch. It's not that the cornstarch is really dis dissolving because you know, if you let it sit there, you'll watch the cornstarch actually go to the bottom. Right, it's, it's a mixture, and what this does, you know how T said, well, it's like your grandma, you tossed it in there, sometimes you get lumps. This will keep the lumps from happening, keeps right? The lumps from happening. That's what, <laughs> that's why I learned to do this because I did that one time and threw in a whole bunch. And you had, and I had big, huge lumps and I couldn't get big it out. Big old it dumpling in the middle. Oh, it's horrible. Now, now, also too, a lot of folks like to use cornstarch as a thickening agent as opposed to flour or roux, because if you're really concerned about fat and you're trying to eat healthily, the dish that Brian did, even though he made it with butter, he didn't have to, and 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 the cornstarch actually has less or fewer calories than actually the flour and the fat or the roux that I'm using. So it's, it's really? another very good way to, uh, to thicken without all the calories. All right, so now for the final thing that we're gonna add in is the sour cream. Now, T had just a little thing and he put in a couple scoops. But mine is gonna make a reappearance. It, it'll make a reappearance. I'm dumping the whole thing in. He's going for the whole yeah. smuts right in the jar. Now again, this is something my mom didn't add as much. I add a little bit more, a little you know. bit more. You made it your own. I made it my own. That's what you got to do. And, yeah, and hopefully you'll take my recipe and make it your own. Make it your own. And just kind of, you don't want to dump it all in. Well, I don't usually. I try to incorporate it before I dump too much in at a time. But you notice that's going to lighten up the color. And it's going to add a lot of flavor. It's going to make it nice and creamy. So we got the Twin Towers of Rice right there. <laughs> oh, you're doing that. And you'll notice over here that... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 I want you to, I want to. I'm just stirring it up. My color, mine's a little wider than yours. <laughs> I was supposed to say. I was looking, then I was looking at your twin towers. <laughs> How, up here, I, eyes up here. I, I was about to, I was to say, choose a line from one that's a little <laughs> lopsided. Hey, <laughs> nobody's perfect, right? All right, so then we just tighten and dump this right over top. I'm sure you could make this look a little fancier no. if you want, but that's about all I'm going to do. Just like that. Beautiful. And then if we have some parsley right over here, I'll put a little parsley right on top. Beautiful. Et voila. Fancy. Fancy smancy. There we go.